This video is about a shop or garage quality harmonograph. It is adjustable and configurable to make a wide range of interesting drawings. I call it shop quality because aesthetics are not considered, just functionality. However, I have rounded and smoothed some edges to make it less likely to give splinters when using it. This harmonograph is not suitable for living spaces because it clashes with any decor. This is the 10th harmonograph I have made that I can remember, but there are probably a few more. About half of these were shop quality. The others were furniture quality, where design and appearance were at least as important as the ability to make interesting drawings. I currently have three of these furniture quality harmonographs. This first one was displayed in two different living rooms over a 20-year period. Needless to say, my wife is exceptionally tolerant. I currently display all three in a basement hallway that has become the collecting area for some of my offbeat projects. I plan to make a separate video of each of these in the future. Part of my motivation for building this harmonograph was to encourage my grandchildren's interest in science and math. As they grew up, they each rediscovered several times my furniture quality harmonographs, but the details of how and why they work are a little obscure. This harmonograph makes it easier to explore some of the details and subtleties of physics and math that enables and limits the characteristics of the drawings. Its configuration is similar to most of the gravity-powered harmonographs you can find on YouTube. The details of construction materials of these are quite different. Nearly all produce an elliptical drawing that makes people say, hey, it looks like a spirograph. This one is mostly made from my accumulated shop scraps and took about a day to build. It has two pendulums, one for the paper and the other for the pen. Each of the primary weights is a box with a through hole that allows it to slide up and down on the pendulum bar. It is held in place with a screw into the bar. They are nearly filled with one foot lengths of 3 8 inch steel rod and weigh about 40 pounds each. The paper pendulum carries a flat table that holds the drawing paper. The pen pendulum moves the pen that writes on the drawing paper. The pen is connected to its pendulum via a yoke and bar so that the pen follows the y-axis and the x-axis motion while providing the freedom to move up and down in the z-axis. The yoke is coupled to the pendulum crossbar by two pivots made from sheetrock screws. A Phillips head brass screw is set in each end of the crossbar. Then a quarter inch diameter conical depression is made in each screw using a drill. The sheetrock screws are then adjusted to make contact with the bottoms of the corresponding depressions. There is a counterweight bar connected to the other side of the yoke opposite the pen bar. The counterweight can be slid on the bar to adjust the z-axis force on the pen. The counterweight's position is adjusted so that the pen draws consistent lines as both pendulums move. Since pen friction is the major cause of energy loss, this force should be minimized. The pen holder and counterweight were made from short lengths of 1.5 inch PVC pipe. The pipe was heated using a hot air gun until soft, then flattened to a loose fit with the bar material. For the counterweight, two short lengths of 3 8 inch steel rod were hot glued inside. For the pen holder, a 3 8 inch hole was drilled through the sides so the drawing pen can easily pass through. For each, a quarter inch hole was drilled and tapped to fit a bolt that enables easy positioning and locking. A plug from a hole cutter was used to make a convenient knob for the bolts. Each pendulum has four pivots. Each pivot is a sheetrock screw interfacing with a conical pit drilled in the end of a quarter inch threaded rod. A square frame holds all four threaded rods, each screw through a blind nut. Saw hole plugs were used for knobs on the threaded rods to make adjustments easy. This configuration makes it possible to make independent small changes to each of the four periods. If the periods of all four pendulums were exactly the same, the drawing would be pretty boring. The general shape would always be elliptical, somewhere between a circle and a straight line. As the pendulum motions decay, the drawing would spiral in so the lines would never cross. It's actually pretty hard to make all four periods exactly the same for a long period. As the pendulums lose energy, there are some small interactions that affect each period differently. So eventually, the lines cross and the pattern folds. To show the effect of small period changes, I immobilized the pen pendulum so it didn't move. Then I spent about a half an hour adjusting the paper pendulum's y-axis period so it was essentially the same as the x-period. Eventually, I was able to get this drawing of an elliptical shape. The major axis of the ellipse did not rotate as the motion decayed, and the closely spaced lines don't overlap. I changed the y-axis pivots by about a quarter inch to get this next drawing. 
The ellipse axis rotated significantly, but the lines do not cross. I changed the x-axis pivots by another quarter inch to get this drawing. Now the ellipse axis rotated more rapidly so that the lines crossed and the drawing began to look folded. With both the pen and paper pendulums free to move and all the periods nearly the same, the shape of every cycle is approximately elliptical. Despite this limitation, a wide variety of drawings can be made by adjusting the small period differences and the starting conditions. These are three typical examples of complete drawings and each is quite different. But if you follow any line for a complete cycle, the basic elliptical shape is apparent. One way to increase the drawing diversity is to use a more complex basic shape. For example, if the pen pendulum makes two complete cycles while the paper pendulum makes one, then the basic shape will be a figure eight or C. To accomplish this, the pen pendulum period needs to be doubled. Just changing the pendulum length is difficult since the period of a simple pendulum is proportional to the square root of its length. So a pendulum with twice the period needs to be four times as long, about 10 feet for this harmonograph. A practical solution is to make a physical pendulum where the weight is distributed on the pendulum bar. For example, adding a weight above the pivot increases the rotational moment of inertia while reducing the restoring torque. A box with a through hole holds the 3 8 inch steel rods used for the upper weight. This fixture holds the upper weight box in place. It slides over the pen pendulum bar and tightening the two thumb bolts holds it in place. The two threaded rods are used to make fine height adjustments. This is the upper weight box ready to be put on the pen pendulum. Other pen to paper ratios can be selected by adjusting the height and or the weight of the upper weight box. Ratios of 3 to 1, 3 to 2, as well as 2 to 1 can be selected by just changing the weight. The position does not need to be changed. These are the weights used for the ratios. Weights are added in pairs to keep the pendulum balanced vertically. The largest weights on the far left and far right are used for the 3 to 2 ratio. The weights second from the left and second from the right are added for the 2 to 1 ratio. All of the weights are used for the 3 to 1 ratio. Here the harmonograph is set for a 3 to 1 ratio. Adjusting the weight and location of the upper box can be difficult and time consuming since the ratios have to be very exact to make drawings that don't look like scribbles. A stopwatch can be used to measure the periods, but it takes watching about 10 complete cycles and practice to get the necessary accuracy. I found an application for my phone called SensorLog that creates a CSV file of its accelerometer values. The X, Y, and Z axis values are measured 30 times per second. After turning on the app, the phone can just be laid on the pen yoke or drawing table while the pendulums are swinging. After about 30 seconds, the values can then be exported to Excel or a similar CSV viewer to make a graph. It's then easy to count the samples between several pendulum cycles to get accurate relative periods for the pen and paper pendulums. This is the harmonograph drawing with a 3 to 2 ratio. The paper cycles three times while the pen cycles two times. The base figure is pretty complex and typically has five points or features where the line goes bump. You can typically find five distinct structures in the finished drawings. This is the harmonograph drawing with a 2 to 1 ratio. The paper cycles two times while the pen cycles one time. The base shape is a figure eight or a C. The finished drawings typically have pairs of similar structures. This is the harmonograph drawing with a three to one ratio. The paper cycles three times while the pen cycles one time. The base shape typically has three loops. Finished drawings often resemble bow ties as well as other things your imagination might identify. A 3 to 1 ratio is at the limit of the range achievable with this harmonograph. There is so much weight above the pivot that the restoring force and energy in the pendulum is quite small. This makes the pen pendulum motion decay rapidly compared to the paper pendulum. I made a mistake on the first build of the pen pendulum. I originally used 1 by 2 stock for the pendulum bar. When adjusting the pen pendulum for the 3 to 1 ratio, I could not get the x-axis period to match the y-axis period. The elasticity of the bar allowed it to bend while swinging. When away from vertical, the primary weight bends the bar towards vertical, while the upper weight bends the bar away from vertical. But the amount of bend was not symmetrical. 
because the elasticity of the bar was not symmetrical. Rebuilding the pen pendulum using 2x2 two two stock fixed the problem. The lesson learned is to use square or circular stock, especially for the pen pendulum. If you are as easily amused as I am, build a harmonograph and share.